How's everyone doing today? Y'all doing all right? So am I. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. <laughs> Labor Day. I'm glad you guys showed up. I didn't know if anyone would be here on this holiday weekend. Thank you for being here. We had a great crowd this morning and over in Frisco. It's been wonderful. Anybody planning on barbecuing tomorrow? Okay. I sometimes find myself Googling a lot. Do you ever Google stuff? I know you do. A doctor told me recently, he said, you know, if you Google some sort of a medical issue you're having, he said, it's 99.9% .9 wrong. He said, whatever you Google, he said, it's probably gonna be wrong if you're feeling this way or that way. I thought, oh, that's, that, that's some pretty good advice. I love animals and I was Googling just a few days ago, the animals on the endangered species list. That list sort of changes all the time. And again, I'm into animals. So I thought I would read to you, just if you would allow me, the most endangered species right now. Would you like to hear that? I can tell. The first animal is the red panda. You know, I saw a panda on my way here from Frisco. He was scaling a tree. Beautiful red, red panda. Also, the Sumatran tiger. The black rhinoceros. That's a good sound effect. <laughs> the Amur leopard. And I thought I would add another animal to this list. The courageous man the courageous woman, or a young person? How about just the courageous Christian to this endangered species list? Is it just me, or do you feel as though our culture has gotten this collective cramp of courage? It's almost like we would rather cower than, than stand. We'd rather mail it in than go, you know what? Here are my convictions, and here I am. I'm standing flat-footed, and I'm going to be kind about it, but here is what I believe. We need, don't we, some courage. It takes courage to have a Christ-centered marriage. It does. It takes courage to resist the greener grass syndrome. It takes courage to be a parent. When you set those ground rules and those kids you know, step over the line, what do you do? Do you say, you know what? It's just too much work. I'm not going to discipline them. I'm not going to allow them to face the consequences. I just want to be their friend, their buddy. I want to be liked. Because if we're courageous and go, you know what? God loves you too much and I love you too much to allow you to get away with that behavior. If we do that too much, man, our kids might go, you don't like me. <laughs> my, my friends never have to put up with stuff like this. You know, courage. It takes courage to be a single parent, doesn't it? it takes courage in the marketplace to be honest, courage in the locker room, courage in the classroom. I mean, when you strap that backpack on and make your way into school, courage, courage. What is courage anyway? Courage is simply committing to your convictions no matter what the cost. I'm committing no matter what the cost. Courage though, True courage begins and ends with God. It begins and ends with God. We have a great capacity for courage. We're made in the image of God. And God desires you and me to be people of courage. We have to face fear, we, we know that. The moment we lift the ball of our foot off of the floor and begin the step toward facing our fear, here's what happens. God infuses us with courage. 
I watch these documentaries on Netflix. I told you a while back, I've been watching this 100 foot wave documentary. These big wave surfers, men and women who surf these ridiculous waves. Wow, I say to myself, I wish I had that kind of courage. Or maybe I'm on YouTube and I'll see someone dive into an icy lake and rescue an animal, maybe a red panda. <laughs> and I'll go, I wish I had courage like that. Or maybe it's the proverbial football player. He's broken his leg in four places, but he's still running and he will score. That's awesome. But those things never happen to me. Are you that way? I'm like, well, that's kind of way over there, way out there. Well, today, I've walked on this stage to tell you it takes courage to live. I mean, major amounts of courage to live an average, ordinary life. Because most of us here are well-adjusted suburbanites. And I'm gonna tell you it takes courage to be the kind of man, the kind of woman, the kind of student that God desires you to be. But I'm also here to tell you, courage is worth it. Courage moves the heart of God. It honors God, and when it honors God, God will honor us. So when I think about courage, I think about Daniel. Pretty much everyone's heard about Daniel. I mean, Daniel in the lion's den. If you haven't, just, just stay with me. Here's the story. Daniel, this, this great man of courage, at 85 years old, was lobbed into a lion's den with Simba, Nala, and Mufasa. He emerged unscathed. It was a miracle of God. An absolute bona fide miracle of God. That's the story, Daniel in the lion's den, and he was thrown in because of courage at 85. But I want you to think about the real essence of this story, because the biography of Daniel, his, his dealings with courage started way back when he was deported from J-Town, Jerusalem, to Babylon. Now you gotta realize, Babylon was a crazy, McCraze place. Perversion, greed, like, like, like we can't even wrap our brains around. The Babylonians took back with them the best and the brightest from Jerusalem. They were thrown into this elite school because they wanted to pretty much brainwash them. And Daniel found himself there with his best friends, those fire marshals, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I think many times we talk about the fiery furnace and we sort of hydroplane over this connection, but let me tell you this. Daniel's courage came from God. Courage begins with God and ends with God. From that though, You've got to think about Daniel's friends. He hung out with the right people. If you hang out with the right people, you have the right places and you'll do the right things and you'll discover God's purposes for your life. That is why the church is so critical. Christianity is not a solo sport. We're to encourage one another. I love that. We're to put courage in, in people. You're a student. You're like, man, I'm standing up for my convictions, but people are muting me. They're mocking me. They're maligning me. I must be the only one dealing with this stuff on the football team. I must be the only one dealing with this on social media. I must be the only one. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's why we make this decision to build our lives, our social lives around the church we connect regularly with people. These people give us encouragement. First, it's from God. He's 
primary as we know. God is sovereign, but these other people can help us in this realm. Courage. So Daniel was a man of courage. Daniel decided, the Bible says, specifically in Daniel chapter one, verse eight, Daniel resolved, I like that, not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. This is the first example we have, you might wanna write this down, of forks over knives. Daniel said, I am going to follow the Jewish diet. It's so interesting to read how he did this, how this played out. He stood, yet he stood respectfully. He spoke the truth in love and they, they allowed this. He had some, some spiritual courage, didn't he? You know, everything is spiritual. But I was thinking the other day, you know it takes a huge amount of courage just to become a Christian? Have you ever thought about that? Just to tell the truth about your condition. Just to say, you know what? I'm a sinner. I, I, I turn from my sin and turn to Jesus. That's why, can I just share this with you? Something that really gets me mad is when someone will say to me, you know what, uh, you know, I understand you're a Christian, but that's just kind of, you know, for people who need a crutch, it's kind of for lightweights. I want to say, and I've not said this yet, but I want to say this, well, obviously Christianity is for people with more courage than you, because at least we're honest about our condition before a holy God. I've not said that. I just have thought that, okay? Okay. Daniel's living the life. It started at 15. And then as we, as we press the clock forward, like 70 years, 70 years, he's still living the life. He's consistent. He is just grinding it out, as we say. He's living the life. He's devoted to the Lord God. Students, though, I want you to notice one thing about Daniel. Let me, let me, let me, just, let me just tell you one thing about him before we jump 70 years later. Daniel did not isolate himself. Self, self, self. No, he didn't. He insulated himself in that culture. In other words, think about the non-essentials Daniel dealt with. Literature, language, customs, whatever. He was cool with that. But in the essentials, his relationship with God, his devotion, his prayer, he stood flat-footed and said, this is who I am. That's very important. Students, especially, when we live life, because people are looking, people are dying to see people with true courage. Okay, 70 years later, here's something else about courage. Courage distinguishes you and me from the pack. I mean, we'll definitely stand out. When the culture tells us to stand down, we stand up and we stand out. That just happens. People will throw shade on you. People aren't gonna dig you. People will slurp haterade about you. They'll, they'll, they'll write some negative comments about you. They'll unfollow you because of courage. We have an opportunity, do we not? To be resilient, man. To, to walk in the consistency of courage. And also to be, I love this, persistent as we follow the Lord. People are dying for it. And it's a supernatural thing. We can't just, we can't just conjure it up. We, we can't just make it up. It just, it just happens. Isn't it funny that our culture calls courage like standing up for homosexuality or transgenderism. 
No, that's not courage. Well, I guess it's a sort of courage against the God of the universe because the Bible says one man, one woman in marriage. Courage? Oh, it takes courage to be woke. Woke is a joke, man. It doesn't take courage. You're just, you're just, going, you're just going with the current. Or you know what? I am pro-abortion. Man, that takes courage. No, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because from cover to cover, the Bible says that we are to protect the lives of developing babies. As I've told you before, you know, I love animals. And Lisa and I used to vacation in a place in Southwest Florida and, and they were freaky about sea turtle eggs. Fencing in the area where the sea turtles had dug and the females had laid their eggs. All these signs and these fines and this and that, if you mess with them, and I'm thinking, they're freaked about this and we're taking the lives of developing babies. Now that's not courage. No, I can't, I can't call that courage. You can stand out when you stand up. The Bible says in Daniel chapter six, verse three, here we go. Now we have a guy named Hilarious Darius. That's his nickname. He was the king. He was the man. He loved Daniel. Daniel was his boy. He had great plans for Daniel. Have you ever known someone like in a leadership position who just talks too much? They're just like, and they're always texting and they're always posting this and posting that, just always talking about themselves, always just bragging and humble bragging and this and that. That can get you into trouble. And Hilarious Darius did that. He was like, oh, Daniel is my boy. He's going to be one of the main leaders. And one day I'm going to set him up over everybody. Well, the Persians didn't like that. And they played the race card against Daniel. What? This Jew? Are you kidding me? Darius is hilarious, man. We're gonna, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take Daniel out. So they tried to trip him up. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter six, verse three, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities. Verse four, the administrators and satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. So they just set him up. And they played up to hilarious Darius's pride. Hey, Darius, what would it be like just to be God for 30 days? Think about it, Darius. You're the man, the man of the hour. You can do it. You can set forth an edict. And once you set forth the edict, everybody has got to bow down before you. And Darius was like, you know, I am great. I am pretty amazing. Pride, you know, is the forerunner of all sin. I've had people talk to me about all sorts of sin in my life. You name the sin, I think I've heard about it. Rarely do, rarely though, have I ever heard someone say, you know what, I'm just prideful. Yeah, I'm, I'm prideful. Yeah, me, I am on the ride of pride. That's an anomaly to hear someone say that. The reason being is pride blinds us and it makes us totally and completely self unaware. That's hilarious Darius. So hilarious Darius goes, okay, here's the edict of the Medes and Persians. He knew he couldn't go back on it. And then, oh, it gets, it gets bad. The palace plotters sneak around to Daniel's beautiful home with their iPhones and they video him walking up the stairs, hitting his knees in prayer three times a day, hearing from God, listening to God, pouring his heart out before God. And they're like, oh, we got him now. And they just sent it off to hilarious Darius. Here's the proof. Darius, what are you going to do now with your boy? 
Darius was like, oh man. I mean, because back in the day, if you get a contract, I mean, that was it. Now in today's world, contracts don't mean jack. Lawyers will still sue you. You can sign all sorts of contracts. What does that matter? But back then, no, they weren't playing. So Darius goes, you know, <sighs> I can't believe this. So they toss Daniel. And the lion's den rolled the stone over the entrance of the lion's den. Daniel, he's probably thinking, this is where courage got me? I mean, God, I live for you in this wild place and now I'm sleeping with Simba and Nala and Mephasa. Darius loved Daniel so much, the Bible says he couldn't even sleep. I mean, he, he, was, he was trying so hard, but he loved him. And the Bible also tells us that Darius kind of knew that Daniel would make it out. And sure enough, Daniel made it out. It was a miracle of God. He made it out unscathed. However, you know the haters? Guess what happened to the haters? They were tossed into the lion's den. <laughs> torn to pieces. Oh, but someone throws shade on me, I want to chase them down. Oh, when she hurts me, I want to chase her down. And do you ever have these like secret conversations, these fantasy conversations, like you're in front of a whole group and you're telling this person off and people are like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you got him. We've all had those conversations. Don't act like you've never had those conversations. <laughs> However, we have to turn them over to God. We have to turn those administrators and satraps over to God. God will take care of them. Are you feeling me? I said, God will take care of them. Daniel was by himself. And it lines to him, but remember, God. And remember his friends. I love verse 17, Daniel chapter six. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. That's interesting. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. And of course we know he came out. When I read that, a stone was brought in and placed over the mouth of the den. I thought about Jesus. Daniel thrown into a lion's den. Jesus crucified on a cross. Daniel facing uncertain death. Jesus, certain death. Daniel delivered from death. Our Lord through death. Daniel came out alive. Jesus came back alive. Daniel technically broke man's law and he was guilty because of it. Jesus was guilty because man broke God's law. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose again and offers us this amazing grace. He offers us the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. He offers us one of a kind, courage, courage in the classroom, courage in the boardroom, courage on the football field, courage in your marriage, courage with your family, courage every single aspect of life. So what do you do? When you're in the lion's den, 
I would argue Daniel's lion's den started when he was about 15. What do you do? You stand for God and he will take you places and do things with your life you never thought possible. Would you pray with me? Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for this place and this space. And I thank you for these courageous people who are hearing my voice. And if you're here and you've never, ever asked Jesus Christ to infiltrate your life, you can do so by just praying this courageous prayer. To simply say, God, I admit to you what you already know, that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short of your standard of goodness. And right now I turn from that and God, I ask Jesus Christ, Jesus, come into my life. I, I believe you lived sinlessly, died sacrificially and rose bodily. And right now I receive you into my life. I give you all that I am now and all that I ever will be. Jesus, take control of me. And the moment you prayed that prayer, Christ came into your life. Now, he's going to do some amazing things as you take each and every step of faith, as you show and advertise his courage. Others here, maybe you're in the business world, maybe you're in academia, maybe you're going to school, maybe you're a single parent, maybe you're involved in temptation. Hey, ask God for his supernatural courage. Rely on Him and the Holy Spirit. Rely on the right people. As you build your life around the right place, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you wanna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life.